Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna talk about something I've wanted to talk about for a while. So the other day I had, or the other evening rather, Jacob and I had a date night at home because where else are we gonna go? And Jacob hasn't seen Jennifer's body as many times as I have. I've seen it many times. I'm a big fan. I know there are probably gonna be some people in the comments saying it was a terrible movie. I personally enjoy it for what it is, plus Megan Fox, so automatically, hello. I wanted to talk about a case that is connected to Jennifer's body. Now, there's no strict confirmation that Jennifer's body was based on this case, but the parallels are so significant that I can't see it being completely unrelated, or that would be a really big coincidence. Anyway, before we get into talking about that case, I did want to thank today's sponsor, which is Casetify. Casetify makes phone cases that have military-grade draw protection, so if and when you drop your phone, you're covered. Casetify has a significant catalog of case designs from minimal to extra, and you can even customize them, which is a feature I really love, and it's also very useful if you want to get someone a gift to have their name or initials on a case. There are also a variety of colorways as well, so you'll always find a color that you like. This is the Case Defy phone case I'm using right now with the neon. Surprisingly, you guys know I love neon. I highly recommend these cases and have used Case Defy for years now. Go to casedefy.com slash ready to glare today to get 20% off your new favorite phone case. Thank you Case Defy for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about the case that may or may have not inspired Jennifer's body. So it's the case of Elise Poehler that we're talking about, who was killed in Nipomo in 1995. On the evening of July 22nd, 1995, 15-year-old Elise Poehler left her home to hang out with three teenage boys who had promised her drugs. Later that evening, the three, aged 14, 15, and 16, held her down, stabbed her, and later had sex with her dead body. For eight months, her body remained in the Eucalyptus Grove on the Nipomo Mesa where she was murdered. One of the boys, Royce Casey, then led authorities to her badly decomposed body. The three boys later pleaded no contest and were sentenced to 26 years to life in prison. So that was a very abrupt beginning of the article, but if you do not know the premise of Jennifer's body, it's an old movie at this point, so I don't really think it counts as a spoiler, but spoilers, I guess. What happens in Jennifer's body is not exactly the same, but it is pretty parallel because in Jennifer's body, essentially, just gonna give you a quick rundown. I'll put a timestamp so if you wanna skip it. In Jennifer's body, she goes to see a band live in concert. She's Megan Fox, so she's very attractive, and the main lead singer of the band is immediately attracted to her and then they start wondering if she's a virgin and they want her to be a virgin and you know, we don't know why at the beginning, but it's because they wanna sacrifice her and what ends up happening is that she doesn't really die. She turns into a supernatural being. That's all you really need to know. The killing started when Jacob Delashmut strangled her with a belt he slipped from his waist. Casey held her down while Joseph Fiorella pulled a hunting knife from a sheath and started plunging it into the girl's neck. It was Del Ashmut's turn next, then Casey's. A forensic pathologist who performed an autopsy on the girl's body concluded she was stabbed at least 12 times. None of the individual wounds were fatal, he testified, meaning she slowly bled to death. Casey told investigators that Elise Polar cried out for her mother while being attacked. She was on the ground praying to God and calling for her mom. Needless to say, this murder was extremely violent and extremely tragic, especially because I don't want anyone to die, but I think all of us usually would prefer if someone went in a quick and painless way. They shouldn't have done anything that they did to her, but I definitely feel like there's an extra added level of cruelty to just let someone bleed out after you've stabbed them so many times. And the fact that Casey, and I'm assuming the others, also heard that she was praying to God and calling for her mom, I don't know how you see a 15-year-old doing that, someone who's your age or close to your age because they were in that age range and you don't, you know, snap back to reality or you don't feel bad. And, you know, maybe they did feel bad, but just not bad enough to do anything to save her or to rectify the situation or call 911, nothing. After she bled to death, they raped her corpse. Casey said he, Fiorella and Delashma, plotted Elise Polar's slaying for more than a month, talking about it often while playing death metal music in a band they called Hatred. The band was styled after a group called Slayer, 
whose albums feature lyrics about the devil and sacrificing virgins. Fiorella, according to Casey, had several books on Satanism. One of my specific questions to Casey, said one investigator, was why? Casey answered it was to receive power from the devil to help them play guitar better. By making this perfect sacrifice to the devil, they would gain more craziness or nuts, as he said, said an investigator, continuing to relate Casey's comments to him. That would make them play harder, play faster, and by making this perfect sacrifice to the devil, it might help them go, quote, professional. Polar's killing had been plotted once before, Casey said. Fiorella and Delashma and another teenager had nearly carried out a plan to kill Elise Polar, according to Casey. So this is where this gets very satanic panicky. And the reason why I say that is because there are a lot of cases, especially in the 70s and 80s, where the police wrote things off as satanic, even if they weren't, or if they were minimally alternative or pagan or gothic or anything that isn't mainstream, a lot of the times they would pin it as like, oh yeah, this is satanism. So like, this sounds like one of those cases because it sounds almost cheesy to believe something like this. In the movie, they actually did sacrifice her to the devil so they could be more successful, the band. There's no reason to murder anyone, but this is such a pathetic reason why. And I don't even know how they could say this without feeling embarrassed because it's so stupid, but on top of that, unnecessary. Because it's like, you can attain better guitar skills with practice, you know? So it's not like they were trying to attain something that they couldn't actually just attain with practice. It's just that they were lazy or didn't believe in themselves and wanted a shortcut, and so this is what they did, which I think makes it all the worse because it's like, take some fucking guitar lessons. It doesn't have to go from zero to a hundred. I'm getting worked up. It's also fucked up to me that there was already a plan to kill Elise prior. I mean, and I also wonder why her, I mean, like, I know it had to be a virgin, but it's also like, there are plenty or there were plenty of other 15, 14, 16 year olds that were also virgins. So I wonder why specifically Elise, if it was because she trusted them or something like that. I just wonder how they even picked aside from the virgin aspect. In a plot similar to that which led to the girl's death, Casey told investigators the trio enticed Polar from her rural Arroyo Grande home and walked to a spot on the mesa where there was a steep ravine. One of the boys pretended to slip down the ravine as a ruse to get Polar to the bottom, the investigators said he was told. Fiorella then tossed Williams a knife, the same one used in her killing. The other teen, however, just stood there. Casey told the investigator, while Fiorella and Delashmet were saying, do it do it. Casey said, Elise Polar must have thought they were joking around and didn't report it. Royce Casey told prosecutors the trio plotted to kill Polar since she had blonde hair and blue eyes and because she was a virgin, she would be a perfect sacrifice for the devil. According to investigators, Casey said he came forward partly because of a newfound religious beliefs, but he testified Casey also believed Delashma and Fiorella planned to kill again. They told him she wouldn't be the only one, there would be others. Casey feared he might be the next victim because he had tried to distance himself from them. A lyric from the band Slayer said, if you're not with us, you may no longer exist. So first of all, what kind of a bullshit reason is she had blonde hair and blue eyes? Like I get the virgin thing, there's a reason for that. But the blonde hair and blue eyes, I don't really know what kind of bearing that has. As far as I know, the devil doesn't have a particular preference. I may be wrong, feel free to correct me. It's fucked up though that she trusted them enough and didn't report them after that incident. And also, the way in which this article is written leaves a lot to be desired because they keep quoting the band Slayer, which I understand these kids modeled their band after Slayer, and that's fine. But again, this reminds me of the satanic panic because you're trying to implicate death metal, which there are plenty of people who listen to that who don't decide to kill someone. The same way there are plenty of people who watch true crime documentaries like me who haven't killed anyone. So it's just, I don't like when that correlation is made because most of the time it doesn't really pertain. Slayer didn't tell them, hey, find a virgin, sacrifice her, do all this for real. So, you know, and music is art, it's not, meant to be literal all the time. So I don't really get why they keep including these quotes, but let's just move on. A few years after the murder, Fiorella and Delashma told Entertainment Weekly that Slayer's music had nothing to do with the murder. Go figure. And that the murder was not intended as a satanic sacrifice. But court records show that before his sentencing, Fiorella told a probation officer he had been influenced by Slayer's music. And in his confession to investigators, Casey said the teens referred to themselves as Satan's children, and had discussed killing Polar in a devil worship ceremony. The case garnered national attention after Polar's parents filed a lawsuit against the band Slayer, which claimed the band's music incited the murder. In 2001, in a ruling eagerly watched by the entertainment industry, a judge said, 
Lyrics written in the heavy metal band may have been offensive, but they did not incite three teens to murder. Slayer lyrics are repulsive and profane, Burke wrote in his 14-page decision, but they do not direct or instruct listeners to commit the acts that resulted in the vicious torture murder of Elise Poehler. Burke also ruled that the music is not harmful to children, as the plaintiffs alleged. Therefore, he added, it is not illegal to sell or market the product and is protected by the First Amendment. The suit, filed in 96, named Slayer and several record labels as defendants in seeking monetary damages and a halt to the practice of marketing violent music towards juveniles. The case attracted national and international attention because of potential impact on the entertainment industry and possible limitations of the First Amendment rights. Very surprisingly, like I initially said, Slayer had, in my opinion, nothing to do with it. And in terms of the satanic worship and sacrifice, I don't know if that's even real or if they were saying that to be edgy or if they were trying to find an excuse. I have no idea. In the end, though, they did choose a girl that as far as we know, was a virgin, and they did stab her multiple times, so like it could look like a satanic devil worship type sacrifice, but at this point, who even knows? However, this case is very similar to what you see in the movie Jennifer's Body. Obviously, the ending is different, but I did think that there were a lot of parallels, and cases like this are really troubling to me because, as we've noted here, a lot of the time, something that is not really of consequence ends up getting blamed. Now, thankfully, it ended up that, you know, Slayer was just Slayer and that these kids just ran with an idea and Slayer happened to be the music they were listening to. That being said, I don't think you sit down, listen to a Slayer album, and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm just gonna go out to the store to find a virgin to give to Satan, to sacrifice to Satan. So I'm glad that that was determined because it's kind of a similar argument as like violent video games make people murderers or actual violent, which are claims that are usually very biased and not substantiated in my opinion. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if you think the satanic sacrifice was actually the reason or if they were just saying that to appear a certain way or to get away with things. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. And let's get right into the fan art.